Welcome to another episode of Wrench. On today's show, if all goes well, I will have finished and primed both front fenders on the 69-911 Blasphemy build. Hi there, as always, thanks for being here. If it's your first time here, I'm Michael. Behind me is a 1969 Porsche 911S that was a race car. I'm converting it back to a street car and putting a twin turbo Subaru EZ30R motor in it. It's called the Blasphemy Build, and it is a really cool project that I've now done over 60 videos for. So if you haven't watched them, you can start at the beginning or you can watch my little uh, time-lapse video called Satisfying, and then it takes you through the beginning till about December of last year. Now, if you've watched a bunch of those episodes and you'd like to find out a way to support the show, you can go to wrench.com slash high five, whoosh, wrench.com slash high five, and on that page, is a link to a number of different ways you can support the show, including an Amazon wish list. I put a bunch of items that I need to finish this build on the wish list. I will use them all. So if you are interested in helping out, uh, I am forever grateful to you and your kin. If you don't want to swing any cash my way, just throw me a high five in the comments. That's okay too. Throw me a high five, throw me a like, throw me a what's up. Uh, so this episode is going to have a lot of firsts in it because there's a whole bunch of things I've never done before. In fact, most of this episode is me doing something for the first time. I have the two front fenders on this car, and I was actually talking to Henry from Costa Mesa Collision, who was on a couple of episodes, the How to Prep Your Car for Paint show. And I said, Henry, do I have to prime the whole thing at once, or can I do it a little bit at a time? He goes, oh no, you can totally do it a little bit at a time. So what I wanna do is get my front fenders into primer today. Now, if you've seen them, I've welded some ST flares on them multiple episodes ago. Uh, over the last couple of shows, I've done a little bit of body work. You guys may have not seen that body work yet, but I've done a layer of fiberglass filler and then a layer of regular filler over the top. They're very smooth now, but they're not quite where they need to be to get primered. So what I need to do in this show is completely finish all of the bodywork, I've got a teeny bit of welding I have to do on one of them. I gotta make sure that the lines are straight. I've gotta make sure they're hammer and dollied the way they need to be. I've gotta do a little bit of sandblasting on them. And I'm gonna walk you guys through all of this stuff. And then I'm gonna actually take my shot at applying a two-part, like real big boy pants primer on these fenders. And if all goes well, I will have completely primered, ready to roll, ready to block, and get ready for final paint. So let me walk you guys through all the work I've done thus far, and then some of the technical stuff I've set up with my compressor and filter dryers and sandblasters and show you the primer and all that stuff. Uh, let's do that right now. So first and foremost, here are the fenders with the flares. They've been sanded a lot lately and they're very, very smooth. I've got a couple of layers. You can see kind of the darker green is the fiberglass filler, which is in some of the more structural spots. And then the lighter stuff is the Evercoat Z-Grip filler. And, you know, obviously there's no uh, smooth O-Vision, but this is very smooth. But a couple things I need to do on some of these fenders, like I have to fix this. You see this little weird, uh, this little dip here? That's gotta be body worked. So I've gotta do a little hammer and dolly work to try to smooth this thing over. I've gotta weld a little spot right there. I've gotta make sure that this section is even. And uh, this thing is legitimately even for the bumper to go on. So that's gotta happen. I've gotta make sure that this thing is right underneath. So there's just like a little bit of body work stuff I have to do on each. And then if you look on the inside, you see some of this like, kind of where the paint's worn away and there's rust in there. That's from the paint stripper that dripped on some of the inside, like the inside of this here, like the inside of this rail, there's gonna be some rust in there. And what I'm gonna do is sandblast that stuff out and sandblast the rust out of here. I'm gonna scuff the rest where I can, like right there, you can see that's all gross. So that I'm gonna sandblast and try to get to nice bare metal and just do a bunch of minor stuff, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do next. I've done some work on the Beast compressor. I put some new belts on it, and I just installed this new filter dryer system. 
the water in your compressor is the bane of any paint job's existence. So you want to keep this thing as dry as humanly possible. I got this portable sandblaster set up from Harbor Freight for like 25 bucks. I put another dryer in there. So not only do I have the filter dryer on that side, but I have another one here. I was just experimenting before with what I was telling you guys, which is sandblasting some of this surface rust off that, that happened from the stripper falling down in there. So I got both fenders to do. And we're gonna walk through the process of like all the little things I need to do just to get these prepared for paint. You know, I've gotta get some filler onto this thing which is where they've seamed this thing together. Um, go over the entire thing again with, you know, 80 grit or something like that so that I can get the um, primer on there. But you can see how this is like rusty and crappy in there. So I'm gonna be hitting that with a sandblaster and just getting this thing all prepared, basically. Okay, a couple quick things I forgot in my opening monologue. Number one is the primer I'm doing is like the real big boy primer. Like it's the stuff they use at actual body shops that requires a hardener. So this stuff, ugh, which is what Henry brought over for me. This is Sherwin-Williams NP75. This is a direct to metal primer. It goes on pretty thick and you give it a couple of coats and then uh, I don't want to say it acts like a, a filler, but it kind of does. It's kind of a high build primer, so you can really get a smooth surface. The other thing was Jabra was nice enough to send over a pair of their uh, Elite 85T earbuds. I've had the 75Ts now for like two years, but unfortunately I lost them on my international trip. So they said, why don't you try these things out? I said, okay, uh, easily the best earbuds that I've ever used. Uh, I don't know if you're like an Apple AirPods guy or whatever, but these are them. They're great. They're not super cheap. They're probably close to 200 bucks. But you guys may not know this, but I've listened to over 50 books since I started the Blasphemy build. So as I'm grinding and welding and working, I've got my earbuds in, I've got my audible.com account going, and I'm listening to a book as I'm working. And it's great. So if you guys are like me and you want to kind of not tune out, but it's nice to go somewhere while you're grinding and not just listen to like the radio or a podcast or something like that, even though I'm a podcaster by profession. Uh, check these out. Check out these Jabras. Let me know what you think. Uh, this is not a paid endorsement other than they sent me a pair of these and I happen to like them a lot. But if you see my shelf, it's like all Jabra earbuds. These guys know ears really well and they've nailed this. So these are a great pair. If you're into it, check them out. What you've just seen me do over the last couple of hours is get this thing as close as I can for paint. I started with sandblasting. Anywhere there was a chip, there was a teeny bit of rust, it got sandblasted and feathered out until it was bare metal. I'm trying to be really anal retentive with all of this stuff because I actually paid a visit to Costa Mesa Collision the other day. I had welded on some flares on a buddy's car and that car just got painted and I couldn't believe how absolutely perfect, I mean perfect, every panel was by the time it went into paint. I realized how incredibly far I was from that kind of perfection on this bodywork. So to make this thing the best paint job I can make it, I need to do as much prep as I possibly can. So I did all the sandblasting, got rid of all the rust, and feathered any chips I could find. 
You guys then saw me do a bunch of body work and hammer and dolly work on the lip. These things are just stamped, you know, in a big old machine. So they have these big giant lips on them that really aren't supposed to be on the fenders. So I hammer and dollied back so the lip curves under like this and then I cut it off. So it was about, maybe it's like three eighths of an inch and I've got this really nice round lip. I then sanded all that down, cleaned up all of the inside by sanding it and then sprayed my favorite VHT roll bar and chassis paint on the inside. It's one of my secret weapons. I love how the stuff looks and it very closely simulates the factory matte finish. I then welded a couple of spots I needed to weld like any holes or pinholes, did a little bit of grinding and then went over one more time with the sandblaster just to make sure everything was good. I'm gonna do a little bit more fiberglass filler and then another layer of regular filler and give the entire thing a sand and then I think it's ready. I think we are then ready to actually prime it. So I'm gonna repeat that entire process on the other fender and if there's anything that comes up that's unusual or not like what I just did on this one, I will ring you guys back up and fire up the camera. Well, I told you if I checked in with you while I was doing this other fender, something went wrong and something definitely went wrong. Now, these fenders out of the gates were like 20 gauge steel. That's really thin. Most of the sheet metal work I'm doing on this car when I provide the sheet metal is 18 gauge, which is a little bit thicker and much easier to weld. 20 gauge is harder. You have to be really delicate because it's really easy to blow a hole through it. Now, with these fenders, I've not only welded them on, but I sectioned them. I shortened them by 40 millimeters. And I had, uh, if you've watched any of the previous videos, a lot of trouble with this passenger side fender blowing holes. And that has not changed because I think the 20 gauge now is probably 22 gauge by the time I've done all the grinding on this thing. It's like paper thin metal to try to weld. And I'm having a really hard time because it's just got a crater in the middle and I was trying to weld it and get it together and it didn't quite work. So we're going old school. I'm gonna lead this thing up like I did earlier on this build. If you guys haven't watched the lead process yet, it's pretty cool. You put some of this tinning butter on first you warm the whole panel up, you put some tinning butter on until it gets like shiny. And basically what you're trying to do is get the metal surface as clean as humanly possible. At that point, you heat the metal and you use your torch and then you basically smush this thing in like you're doing a big chunk of uh, solder or solder if you're in the UK or Australia. And you basically spread this thing around with these wooden paddles uh, until it's like a peanut butter texture. You keep it just warm enough to keep this thing smooth and you fill it in like you would any modern filler like Bondo or something like that. The real upside is is that it's metal. You're getting actual metal on metal. The bond is incredible and in my case I can really form it and shape it around the corner and on the other edge of this lip here where I'm having all of this problem. So let's lead this thing up and hopefully We'll get to, to filing it and scraping it until we have a really nice transition on this fender. Okay. We are leaded here now. You can see that the gap is much better than it was. I'm gonna let this panel cool down a little bit. It's still super hot. And then start hitting it with the flat file. This is what's great about leading is that you can really just file exactly what you need off of here and uh, leave what you don't. Now I've got this really nice stable platform uh, and hopefully this thing dials in a lot better than it was. All right, we are ground down now. This is what it looks like. Looks really good. A couple little divots, nothing that a little bit of the filler won't be able to handle with no problem. Uh, but now it's like really solid and stable. The lip is really good. It's not going anywhere. And it's very smooth, very able to be filed. So that is a job well done and a big mess made and I am a sweat box. All right, it's a couple days later, guys, and I've just spent probably two or three hours on this 
fender. Uh, another couple of rounds of filler. I've then sanded with 40, 80, and 150. And it is legendarily smooth right now. I've really got this area dialed in. It's shaped nicely. There's a couple pinholes here and there, but I can deal with that after primer. This thing is nine tenths of the way there to primer. And now I'm basically doing the same thing on this one. I'm gonna knock this down with 40 grit and then 80 and then 150 the entire thing. So it's nice and clean and ready to roll. And then probably go over each one of them a little bit by hand. Make sure I scuff all the inside spots here, all the inside spots here. And then get this thing ready for primer, which is super exciting. Now, if there's any doubt about how strong this fiberglass reinforced filler is, I've got some that kind of globbed on here and it's taken me like 10 minutes with pliers and screwdrivers and all kinds of stuff to try to remove it. Uh, so I feel pretty good about it being able to add a little structure to some of the sides of this thing. And uh, yeah, we're so close. We are so close. I'm at the very, very last little bit here of cleaning this thing up. Well guys, I am set. I have both fenders and my deck lid sanded to 150. They are as perfect as I can get them before priming. So now I have to get my area ready. This area is gonna be my little paint booth with uh, Ben stretching in the background. And what I have to do first is hose the entire thing off and try to get rid of most of the dust that I've been generating over the last few days. I will then drain my air compressor and get rid of all the water that might be in it and then re-engage that and then each panel will get a soap and water clean to try to make them as dust free as possible. So once everything is clean and scrubbed, I'll hit the panels with a wax and grease remover and then make sure that the compressor is all charged up again. And then I guess I'll get to mixing the primer. Once the primer is ready to rock, I will wipe the panels down with these cool wipes that Henry from Costa Mesa uh, Collision gave me. Uh, and I guess they're ready to go. So that's the plan. Let's see how we do. Well, this is it. Over the last couple of minutes, you guys have seen me finish all the sanding, clean my entire paint area, clean both fenders and the rear deck lid, and now I have to mix the primer. I've never done this before. I have really no idea what I'm doing. Uh, I've got a Harbor Freight gun and a little Harbor Freight gun holder, and I hope I just get my mixing ratios right. Um, I don't really know what to do here, so I'm kind of winging it based on videos that I've seen and uh, thanks to the Paint Society guy, and thank you so much to Henry from Costa Mesa Collision. Uh, it's out of your hands at this point, so if I blow it, it is completely my fault. What we've got here is Sherwin-Williams Premium Undercoat. This is a direct-to-metal primer. We've got some reducer, and we've got some hardener. So I have to make all of those three things play together. Uh, in the right ratio. And to do that, you use one of these mixing cups. These cups have numbers on them and they have all the ratios, in theory, that you need for a two or three part application. Next, every bit of these primers and paints comes with a product data sheet. Product data sheet tells you what the ratio needs to be. 
It tells you what a good temperature is, what your drying times are, etc., etc. So in this case, I am five parts NP75 to two parts reducer to one part hardener. Okay, which means in theory, I'm going to mix into my little cup here. I want to do probably at least half of this cup. I'll probably want more, but I'll start with this one. So what I'll do is I will go to the five to one and I'm going to fill my primer to seven. Okay. And basically what you do is you basically go each column. So if I was going to do five to one to one, I would go in the five column to seven in the one column to seven and then the next column to seven. That would give me five to one to one, but I need to five to two to one. So I'm going to go uh, to the seven. And then I'm going to go to the eight, and that's going to give me two parts. And I'm going to go to the next eight, and that'll give me the one part. And I mix it all together, stick it in this gun, stick the gun into the air, and go and shoot a little bit onto a piece of cardboard. Onto that piece of cardboard. Of course, right now the wind decides to kick up a little bit, but whatever. Um, I'm going to wear my mask. I've got a good mask here for. Uh, to keep my, my body intact. And I think that's it. Um, I don't know much about adjusting these guns. I've never shot one in my life. Uh, I actually did a little water on the wall uh, a couple months ago when I first got it, but I don't even know what all the knobs do. <laughs> but uh, we'll soon find out because I'll start shooting stuff around and see how it works. Hit it on this thing. And then uh, when we're ready, we'll fire at will, shall we? I don't know why I'm so nervous, but I totally am. I've never done this before. But first time for everything. You know what we say around here. Send it. Okay. It's got some brown gook on the top. Let's get that all mixed together. We need like a paint mixing thing. I'm also scraping this thing on the bottom to make sure I get all the solids involved in this mix. This is probably going to be a few minutes of mixing to, to make sure it's really good. It's pretty thick too. I hope the default setting on this Harbor Freight gun is enough for this uh, thick ass primer. This stuff kind of feels like it's between body filler and primer. Like it's really thick. It's kind of the consistency of like a well blended, uh, you know, milkshake or smoothie. And then the reducer obviously will make it a little waterier and a little easier to spray, hopefully. A couple more minutes of mixing. I'll come right back when it's done. All right, I'm going to make a colossal mess if I try to pour this thing directly. So I just grabbed one of my little liners that I have and I'm going to just kind of dip it in there a little bit. Wow, this stuff is really thick. Just to take some of the top off of this thing so I can get in there. I need to get one of those pourable uh, tops, which I don't think I have at the moment. It's all right. This is working. We're being patient here. We're patient here on wrench. So five to one to one. And I want to go to seven. And I'm at like six and a half. So let me get a little bit more here. And all right. That's seven. Okay. So now we do two parts reducer. Let me shake this up. What do you do? I don't know if there's any solids or anything in there. So, so we're looking to go on my little mixing cup here to what, seven. Seven would be one, eight would be two. So it's five to two. So this goes to eight, right? Yeah. Five to two, reducer. This is reducer. Okay, reducer. <laughs> uh, seven, and that's gonna go to right there. Five, that's seven. And this is Almost eight. Almost eight. God damn, let's pour this way, Mike. You know better. 
Alright, that's eight on the nose. And now one hardener, which also wants to go to eight. Again, I don't know if I'm supposed to shake it, but I'm shaking it. I've got an old door set up on the wall over there. And uh Alright, so this is gonna go to eight. Alright, we're good you guys. I think. Let's give this thing a mix. So exciting. So exciting. Give this thing a mix. I've seen people do this hundreds of times. And this is the first time I'm doing it myself. It's much more liquidy now, like much more water consistency than it was. After all the ratios, starting to cream out a little bit. He 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 he. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set the camera up at the door, and then I'll pour this thing in. So one down, one in the books. I think it was okay for a first timer. Um, there's definitely some adjustments to the gun I would like to make. Man, look at the curves though, holy crap. Hi Ben, what do you think of the curves, bro? Uh, I think it looks, I think really good. You know, there's some orange peel, but this is not that coat. But it's actually, this is the first time I've gotten to see my body work and see how I did. Uh, I've got a couple of issues right here that I can immediately see. That I'm gonna to have to deal with it's a little wavy but one of the cool things about this particular primer is that it's glossy not all primers are glossy so once this thing gets a little more matte I can spray on another coat but man sure does look nice uh, I can also see the um, the body filler like absorbing the primer which definitely happens and I've got a couple of adjustments I'd like to make to the gun um, just to make sure that it is shooting the way it, it should be like, I don't know if you can see this. It's kind of orange peely a little bit. And I feel like maybe there's too much pressure in the gun. So I've got to deal with that. But it, man, it's dope to see the panels like be a panel. But man, there's some real issues right here. I can see I'm going to have to do some work here and probably reprime it. I don't know what that was, but it looks it's the same one. It's the same fender that's been a pain in the ass. But uh, it all looks good. It all needs significant work. I can see, you know, the waviness and things like that. But that's what primer's for. That's what this is for. All right, we got three primed pieces. Self-evaluation. After the first coat, I think I had a B minus. Look at a pretty... Look at that. After the first coat, I think I had a B minus, and I thought I did pretty good. After the second coat, I dropped a good full letter grade, if not two. Um, I've got a ton of orange peel. I'm not sure if the camera can show it. I've I mean, it's primer, so it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, but overall, it's good. You know, I put a couple of coats on. My inclination is that they're too thin, and my gun wasn't very set up correctly i did give myself a run like right there you can't really see it so i have a pretty good idea of what i need to do with the body work it's all now very apparent and uh yeah there you go well like i said i'm gonna give myself like a c minus for this one maybe a d plus depending on what side of the aisle you're on i don't know that my gun was right um I didn't have a regulator on the gun, so I don't know if my pressure was high or low. I'm going to correct that. I'm actually going to get a better gun probably from Amazon. I'm going to fix and block some of the stuff on these fenders and on the deck lid 
block it all out, and then probably hit it with another coat of this primer, hopefully the right thickness and depth and that kind of thing. So, uh, good learning experience for me. Uh, it went probably about as well as I thought it would. Thankfully, uh, a couple of things. Number one, I think that the um, actual mixing and stuff was fine. It wasn't that scary. I got that part together. It also lasted a lot longer than I thought. You know, I used about, um, let's see, I used about this much of this um, canister here and, and I got almost, actually I got, you know, two coats out of it. You could argue that I wasn't doing the coats thick enough and that is something I'm gonna look into, make sure I have the right gun. I'm, I think there's one on Amazon that some people use that's pretty much disposable like the one from Harbor Freight. Um, and I'll get a regulator on it. And that's it, but I got through it. Now it'll be a lot less scary the next time I have to do it. And now I have a better idea of what I have to fix on the panels, which is significant. Uh, I thought I was out of the woods, but I got some work to do. So until next time, I'm gonna show you guys the final result. Uh, it'll be tomorrow morning for me. It'll be right now for you during the outro. I'll see you next time. <laughs>